this is Jeff from TournamentBowl.com and I'm going to show you how you can incorporate all events in your tournament at TournamentBowl.com. Now all events is a pretty standard add-on uh, option for USB-C styled tournaments and what it really means generally is it's an event that takes the scores from multiple other events and puts them together. And Generally, that's singles, doubles, and team, but it wouldn't have to be. It could be um, other events, uh, but you're putting them together into a new event, usually an optional add-on type thing. So, we've got our singles, doubles, and team set up here already in this demonstration tournament, and we're going to add all events now. And so that's one of the formats that you can add down there. And we'll, we'll do two of them. We'll do handicap and we'll do scratch. And again, we'll do a, a short name so it shows up a little tidier on the standings. Number of bowlers on a team is always one for all events. And entry fee, I don't know what to charge for all events. And we'll leave these things at no. Now, this is an important thing to understand is that you have to use USB-C numbers or some sort of identifying number for bowlers if you use all events and that's because tournament bowl needs to know which ones to group together and it groups them by USB-C number. If you put Marshall Holman into singles under one USB-C number or you just leave it blank and it auto creates one and then you put Marshall Holman into doubles with a different USB-C number, tournament bowl is not going to group those together. The next thing you need to figure out is which events are going to be included. Remember, you have multiple events, and sometimes we have senior singles and women singles and different kinds of singles events and doubles and team and things like that. So these are our events that we've created. So probably in this tournament, we would want a singles entry, a doubles entry, and a team entry to make up their all events. Um, every checkbox you have is going to be one column on the standings, and you'll see what I mean by that later. Sometimes people bowl singles twice, or bowl doubles twice, or three or four times. So which set do you want to include in all events? Your options are the first one or the highest one. Usually we use the first one, but who knows, maybe you want to let people re-enter and, and they get to take their very best entry as their all events. And the number of games to bowl. Now, this is obviously going to be nine because three, six, nine. Okay, so let's make this handicap. Um, and 90% of 220, and we'll leave the negative handicap in place. And oh, but we do have an option down here. So these are the standard options based on the number of games or the series. Notice there's no team options because this is only singles. But you can also just take the handicap from the events. So that means whatever their individual handicap is from the team event, just use that for all events. Whatever their individual handicap is from the doubles event, use that for all events. And so that's probably the cleanest just to use that. And then that overrules, overwrites that. Okay, so now we make the event. And let's make another one now all events. This will be all events scratch. And for this one, let's say it's any singles event, any doubles event, and any four-person team event. Now, how that's, it's not going to be different at all for this tournament because we only have one singles event, one doubles, one team. But there could be multiple singles events going on in your tournament. You, like I said, you could have seniors, you could have ladies singles, you could have um, mixed doubles, men's doubles, ladies doubles, and you have separate standings for all of those, but if a person bowls any kind of doubles, you want that to count for the all events. So this is more general, and, it, and it's going to uh, make three columns that um, could have different things in them. So I'll, I'll check these boxes for the scratch all events just so you can see the difference uh, and what the standings looks like. Okay, and again, first set bold, and let's make this nine. This is scratch, and that makes all of this. Okay, so you've got your two events created now. So if we look at standings, we're going to see singles, doubles, teams, all event handicap, all event scratch. And you can see the column headings for those um, singles, doubles, team, any singles, any doubles, any team. So that's because we set those up differently. So now, how do we put bowlers in? Well, typically when we put bowlers in, going to be in squads 
and let's go into check in here and I've got a couple of teams here set up and let's say we're going to check in Darren and he shows up and he says oh I want to bowl all events um, we've got these new check boxes available here in this new columns so we can put him into the scratch and handicap and save and now he's in and maybe Verity wants to get into just scratch. And if you new, have a new team, as you put in the new team, you can just check the box if they're going to be in. And so that's one way that you can put people into all events. Or the other way is you'll notice you've got a new link here on your green tournament toolbar. And so if you click on that, now we see everybody that's in, uh, in our tournament and we can decide if we want to put them into all events. And it also shows you what events they're in. So, for example, Reynold is only in singles. Now, he can get into all events if he wants, and maybe he's still going to sign up for doubles and team, but it's good to know that he's not in everything just yet. Uh, here's Mary. She's in singles, doubles, and team, and maybe she's in all events handicap. And Richard, let's say he gets into scratch, although he's only in singles, so he would still have to sign up for doubles and team if he wants to have a chance. And Kevin would definitely get into both. Let's just say. And now they're safe. Okay, so the next thing I'll show you is what the standings look like. But first I'm going to put some scores in. So let's go into squads. And we'll enter scores by game. And I'm going to pause it now. And I'm going to put in some scores. And now I've entered some scores and I put them into uh, all three squads, so we're well populated now, and let's take a look at our standings. So here's singles, doubles, and team, as expected, and then, and then now here's our all events handicap, singles, doubles, and team. Each one of these links back to that bowler's scores for that event, so bowling doubles, and so you can even click here and edit those scores if you wanted to. This over here, the yellow pencil always means edit. So if you click that, now we're editing um, how Mary's All Events is created. You can see that it's a 653 for singles, some details of when that was bold, doubles and team. Now, if Mary had multiple entries in doubles, they would be in this drop-down list. So if we wanted to manually change that to a different set for some reason, and so we switch it to something else, you can just manually change it right there. Now, you should only do that at the end of competition because if she bowls again, then Tournament Bowl is going to use your settings to determine which set to use and override things again. So it'll, it'll make a new decision on which set to use. You could change the average that would change her average just for all events, not for the other ones, so you probably don't want to do that. But just trying to give the director control over things here. Uh, and then again, here's the standings for all events scratch. And we can see if somebody's not done yet, because they don't have sets there, it's going to be a blank. We knew poor Richard only was in singles. If they were entered in singles, or in doubles or teams, but just hasn't bowled yet, then I think it puts a star there. So you can see at least there's a score coming. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much how it works. It's pretty straightforward. Bowlers enjoy all events, and it's pretty easy to do with tournamentbowl.com um, and fun for people to keep track of.